I ran for office, gave it my all, and knew the entire time I was going to lose. Inspiring, right? Well, believe it or not, some people actually thought so. But why would I do that? It's a great question. So I've actually run for office twice, and the first time it really started like this. I'm driving along, it's election season in my town, and I'm seeing signs pop up for state representative. I don't love the platform I'm seeing, so I take to Facebook, showing my age a little bit here, and reach out to my county party and ask who's running for state rep in District 90. The answer was no one. So I decided, you know what? I want an option. People deserve to have an option. I'll do it myself. And I did. Now, as a political newcomer, bright-eyed optimist, and somebody whose campaign had gone slightly viral, I was hopeful. I'd used this little tool called TikTok. I don't know if you've heard of it, but I had gained substantial ground, raised a decent chunk of money, and reached a lot of people who'd never even been involved in politics before. I really thought I had a chance. It was a pandemic, and nobody knew what they were doing during a pandemic, right? But I was a little shocked and a lot crushed when I lost. Another thing that I wasn't told is that a lot of candidates don't win their first election. Kind of rude that nobody mentioned that to me, but it's whatever. But I loved running for office. I enjoyed the process. I loved connecting with voters. I loved educating about the issues. I even loved the hard work of campaigning. So after the loss, I knew that I wanted to do it again. But this time, I knew more. I knew I was going to lose. So I wanted to run the race where I could make the biggest impact and reach the most amount of people. My party was looking for a candidate for lieutenant governor. So after learning what the heck a lieutenant governor does and making sure I could consistently spell it, I agreed. I capitalized on those social media platforms from the previous campaigns and continued to use them to educate voters. I did things like skits and trends, even songs and raps, which may sound a little bit goofy, but as a mental health professional, I know we learn best through play. So why not make politics a little bit more accessible to everyone and a little bit more fun while we're at it? For example, What's Lieutenant Governor do? That's a solid question. It's a part-time job during the legislative session. They preside over the Senate and would vote to break a tie and serve as governor if they resign or die. That goofy rap got like almost half a million views and people learned something they didn't know about politics. That's a win in my book. Okay, you may be thinking, Kelly, good for you for being willing to educate people in a clever way, but what's the point of running if you can't win? Solid question, there are reasons. We live in a constitutional republic with democratic principles. The word democracy comes from the Greek and means power comes from the people. At the core of this is voting. If you don't have an option on your ballot, if somebody just wins by default, then on principle, we are not practicing or promoting democracy. I should have made that a wrap, probably. But the point is, we need options in order to have a voice. Here's something that actually happens on the regular. And to be clear, this happens regardless of party. Let's say somebody wants to be a state senator. No one steps up to run against them. They just get to be the senator. If this sounds bonkers and rare, it's not at all. In Arkansas in 2022, 14 of our 35 state senate seats went unopposed. 44 of our 100 House of Representative seats went unopposed. They just got to sign up. Their districts didn't get a choice. Now, I didn't win, but my state had an opportunity to choose, and that matters. Data shows that contested elections produce better elected officials, which makes sense. People who've had to defend their jobs might be a little more inclined to do them well, right? While I'm talking about options, quick time out. Consider running for office. I'm always trying to recruit people to run because everyone has something valuable to bring to the table. The most common reasons I hear not to run are, I'm not qualified or I've got too many skeletons in my closet. You're probably qualified. Most of the time, the qualifications are living in the place where you live and being the age that you are. Most of us are probably that. If you're still unsure, I encourage you to watch your local government in action for a minute and you might feel differently about your qualifications. On the skeletons, the only reason skeletons have any power is because we give it to them. What if we normalize the fact that most people have done a thing or two they might not want to trend on Twitter? What if we helped keep things from trending on Twitter by focusing on what's important during election cycles? We've got to take some responsibility for that and do better. 
Okay, so you understand we need options for democracy. You're gonna consider being one of those options, right? Now, raise your hand if you have heard the phrase, my vote doesn't matter. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, keep your hand raised if you enjoy being manipulated. I know this just got awkward, right? Bad news, my vote doesn't matter is a technique that is used to keep you from voting. Here's another very plausible example. Let's take our state Senate candidate, and let's say somebody does, in fact, step up to run against them. Yay, democracy, right? We see elections like that determined by a handful of votes every cycle. And then that person can go on to become the deciding vote on a bill that becomes a law for the entire state. Your vote doesn't, what now? Now, to be fair, Arkansas currently has a supermajority, meaning one party vastly holds legislative control. So it's unlikely that one or two votes is going to determine a law right now in our state. But can you see how uncontested elections lead to states becoming more extreme politically? Every time a seat goes unopposed, it makes it more difficult for another party to make any headway. Now, I see the comments in the news declaring this or that state, this or that color, but hear me out. In 2022 in Arkansas, barely over half our registered voters actually voted. Now, our current governor got 63% of the vote of the people who voted, but she only got 32% of the registered voters' vote. It's hard for me to get on board with the majority of a state feels a certain way when so few people are using their voice. And maybe they got apathetic about voting because they haven't consistently had options up and down the ballot, which ironically is the only time your vote doesn't matter. Can you see how it's all connected? We've got a lack of candidate options and we've got a lack of engaged voters. We cannot fix a problem of that scale in a single election or two. Political movement is generally kind of slow. The whole, it's a marathon, not a sprint mentality. Now, I love a running metaphor because I'm a runner. Unfortunately, I don't win running races either, but I do set goals and make a plan to meet them, okay? So if I wanna run three miles, I'm gonna run a mile and a half out, so I've gotta run a mile and a half back, right? It ensures I run what I set out to run. I did what I wanted to do with this campaign for lieutenant governor. I wanted to engage and inform voters. I wanted to empower them at the polls to know what they were talking about when they went in to vote about the issues. I wanted to encourage people to run for office in the future. I wanted to show people that we could do things in a different and fresh and fun way, bring more people to the table, and that politics doesn't have to be ugly. Districts simply don't flip dramatically overnight. Sometimes it takes some losing to get there. Most of your favorite politicians, and maybe your least favorite, have lost an election or two. While only winning is winning, the people that we reach, the volunteers that we engage, the conversations that we start, all of that matters and leaves the community a better place than when we found it. I understand that recruiting people to run for office, being upfront about the fact they're not gonna win, maybe doesn't feel super inspiring, but maybe we could view it as admirable, not a lost cause or a sacrificial lamb. Maybe it matters to be willing to put in that work, not for the win, but for several smaller alternative wins. Maybe we could even recruit more candidates to run if they knew their work would be done on election day. What if we had options on our ballot? What if we had so many that we could vote for who we wanted to, not just against the person we don't want? What if everybody who could be voting was voting and knew that their voice was powerful? And what if we could be patient with slow political progress? I'll bet fewer people would need to run to lose. Thank you. Thank you.